John chapter 7. After these things, ooh, after this chapter 6, big mighty chapter, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, that means Judea. He goes up north. Because the Jews sought to kill him. Why? Because they didn't get their bread? No, because the verse says in 6 27, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for. No, that's not. Chapter 6. I am. I am. All right, I was looking at chapter 5. I was thinking about chapter 5. Jesus has remarkably, and the Jews have taken it to, I'm God. And so when you get somebody who says, Jesus never proclaimed himself to be God, why did the Jews get upset? Why are they willing to stone him? Why are they willing to kill him? Why did Paul kill Christians? Now the Jews feast of tabernacles was at hand. It was about September, October of our calendar. His brethren, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, cousins and whoever, <laughs> his brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go to Judea. Now, you think his brother is disciples? Because they'll say, Jesus, your mother and your brother are here. Well, that's his disciples. And thy disciples. You see what the Bible says? Brethren is different from the disciples. You know, his, you know his brothers and sisters told him? Get out of here. Take your disciples and leave. Will you? Go to Jerusalem. Go to Judea. Get out of our parts of our, our country. Thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Get out. Go do your miracles somewhere else. That's a great attitude by Jesus' family, isn't it? <clears throat> for that, for there is no man that doeth anything in secret. And he's not doing things in secret. Look at these charges. And he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. Isn't that what he's been doing? He's been going to Jerusalem. He's been traveling around. He, he's, he's at the he's Cana. He's everywhere. His brother are telling him, just get out of here. You're doing this bad business. We're getting a bad reputation. We can't do nothing around you. Everybody thinks we're all to be like you. For neither did his brethren believe in him. That is his family. So, let's just, I am kin to Jesus. Jesus, am I not your, your your brother? Depart from me, I never knew you. Jesus, am I not your aunt that took care of you and gave you those ugly sweaters? Depart from me, I never knew you. I you like that one? Imagine the opportunity, and I don't, I don't want to, imagine the opportunity or the situation that Jesus will be casting his own blood family by Mary into the lake of fire. You know, you ever think about your own loved ones? What about Jesus? You don't think Jesus loved these people he grew up with? And really admired that some of these people may have really done things for him and helped him? And It says here some of his family did not believe. So what? So you think Jesus is just going to pardon him because it's his family? I I throw not. And you tell me it's not going to hurt Jesus that some of these people that he grew up with, his own family, he's going to chuck into the lake of fire, which burns forever. Jesus suffered all points that man suffered. He's going to cast his. I'm trying to say is he's he lived a life as a human. He's going to throw his own family into hell. Don't you think that he's going to spare your your children? Don't think he's going to spare your parents. I bet you it's going to hurt. Because he died for them too. 
Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come. They tell him, Get out of here and go to Judea. And Jesus said, My time has not come yet. You know, you know what his family is really saying? That they don't know what they're saying? Get out of here and go get crucified. He can't go into Jerusalem yet. He can't go into Judea yet. Because they would catch him. He would die before his time. He said, I can't go. But your time is already your time is all way ready. You could die today, he's telling them. You could die at any moment. I have a particular date and time, but you could die right now. That's right, that's one of the messages I preach on the street. You don't know when your time's coming. We're not like Jesus. We don't know. I may preach to someone on a Sunday on a Saturday morning. And they will never see Saturday afternoon. You don't know. What if you know? What if we pack up and leave and find out some idiot drove through the crowd, or somebody crossed the street and got hit by a car, or across the street carrying too many watermelons and have a heart attack? You don't know. Someone hits a baseball up and over and bangs the guy in the head. There was one of those was a big shot name in history. The guy died because a seagull dropped a clamshell on his head, trying to open it. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. So let me ask you something. How can you bring the world in the, into the church and think God's going to bless it? What did Jesus just say? But I testify of it that the works thereof are evil now how are you going to bring the works of, into the of the world into the church when it hates Jesus and the works are evil and you think God's going to bless that in the church if I read my Bible correctly you bring that world that hates Jesus you bring the works that are evil the world into your church I see Jesus standing outside your church knocking will you come out and I've seen things I don't even believe it, some of the things I'm seeing today That verse right there, anybody, we're going to do the world's means. Even they don't, you know, they, they got the bright idea. It's not really the world. It, you know, it's a good testimony for Jesus and all that. 7-7 seven, seven is a good verse for that. If the world hates Jesus, why invite him into the church to get saved? Church is not the place for lost people to come. It's a city of refuge for the Christians to get out of the world. I gotta work. I gotta work our midweek services, so I can only go to church Sunday. You realize it feels like a year since the last Sunday I've been to church. When I come the next Sunday, it feels like so much of a year. I'm telling you, lost people don't belong in a, in a Bible believing Christian church. They're there. They're invited. They don't. Belong. You're supposed to witness to them. You're supposed to go eat into the world, not bring the world in the church. Go ye up to the feast. I go not up yet. And my page will turn. Now, I believe this is the part of the scripture. It says not up yet. I believe I think that's the one there where that yet is is removed out of the modern Bibles. This may not be. This may be the one in Matthew. But he says not yet. Unto the feet, his brother said, hey, "Go to Jerusalem. It's the feast time. Get out of here. Leave without us." That's what they're telling him. For my time is not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he bowled still in Galilee. So he didn't listen to them. He stayed in Galilee. That's north. But when his brethren were going up, then he then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Now he said, I go not up yet. He didn't say he's not going. But I'm going to go. But not yet. So he does go, and he lets his brethren go. Then he goes, and he doesn't go 
And hi, everybody. Here I am. He goes, you know, because they want him dead. You see how much those Jews want him dead? I'm not saying Jesus is a wimp, but he's, you know what? He's not doing anything openly because he know they'll grab him. But he's going to do his work. So he's not going to go as a Christian into the middle city of Muslims and proclaim the gospel openly and get his head chopped off. That's not how you do it. Jesus knows they're going to kill him. He does his ministry, but he does it wisely. For a Christian today, don't go running to a Muslim country and go on the street corner and start preaching Jesus the blood. Of the You're going to lose your neck and you ain't going to get a crown. Go into a Muslim country and deal with the people one by one, rightfully, prayerfully, with the word cautiously. You know, I got a street ministry. I go down and I mean, I stand right in the middle of the road. I got a street ministry and I get hit by a Greyhound bus. And I'm going to get, no, you're not going to get a crown. You're an idiot. And Jesus would probably tell me, you are an idiot. That's your new name now in glory. Idiot. I mean, Jesus is a practical joker. He has jokes. He has sarcasm. So what I'm trying to say is you got a ministry. You know people are out to get you. Be wise. Don't give up, but be wise. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? Now, the law stated the males would appear three times a year. This is one of those times. So they want to catch him. And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. Almost like I thought it was a Baptist meeting there for a minute. But the murmuring has always gone back into Jewish history. They were murmuring in the wilderness. So be careful. You as a parent will pass on traits onto your great 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 grandchildren. You don't think that sin you're involved today is going to hurt the Lord Terry's? Let's just see if I can find Deuteronomy real quick here. 1451 BC, I had the first date of Deuteronomy. We're looking at 32 AD. So almost 1500 years the Jews are still murmuring against God because Jesus is God he's a good man true others say nay but he's a but he deceiveth the people oh look at that the highway split of who, who is Jesus Howbeit, no man spake openly of him for the fear of the Jews. And we'll see that in chapter 12, verse 42, where, where the, the mother and father of one guy, you know, we can't say nothing because we, we still want to go to the temple and we still want to buy and sell in just amongst the Jews. Listen, if they were to speak o openly about Jesus and, and be with Jesus, they'd lose their business, they'd lose their family, they'd lose their house, they'd just be outcast. They would be Samaritans. But we know a place in Samaria that, that received Christ. That would have been a good place to go run to. But pride would keep you from that. Now about the midst of the feast. So this would be during, I think, was seven days. Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters having not learned? Never learned. Where did he get his education? Where is his PhD? Letters, you know, it's funny how it says letters, PhD, his doctor, DR, period. Where's his grades? A, B, C, D, F. Where, where, where's his uh, CU, you know, something university? Where on earth did this, this man is supposed to be a carpenter? Where did he learn this stuff? You forgot approximately 20 years ago that he put you in a spot. 
Remember that 13 year old boy that sat there and asked questions and answered questions and put you to amazement until his mom came and took him home? Here he is. Now, if they're stunning that here is this Galilean, I'm going to just say with the family, let's go with it. This Galilean carpenter is preaching and teaching stuff that he's not supposed to know, that he has no right to know, and would have never known. Then he has to be God. And what they're saying is Jesus has no doctor, he has no title, he didn't go to their university. Even Paul had more credentials than Jesus. Read Paul's credentials. Pharisee first. Pharisee first. Uh, he sat under one, I don't know what the guy's name. You know, he sat under this one teacher. Jesus didn't. Jesus sat under God. And he's doing more than what, hey, listen. If anybody deserves the title doctor, uh, uh, leprosy being healed, I think that's a great one. Uh, he's a reverse of a mortician because he brings people to life. You ever wonder in the time of Jesus, these people that he raised from the dead, he angered the morticians because you know what? They have to give the money back. He didn't need the, the coffin. He didn't need the tomb. With Jesus around, later on, and that's why he's called life insurance. Jesus gave him life from death. But where are these letters of him? And Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Here he goes again. You want to know where I got my learning from, boys? It's from God. If any man will do his will, God's will, he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. There he goes again. You know what just told him? You know why you don't know what I'm doing, what I'm saying, and you're questioning my authority? Because you have no knowledge of God. Ooh. That would be almost like a Catholic listening to last night's uh, message. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Now let me ask you, as Christians who do believe the Bible and study the Bible and love God and are saved and have the Holy Spirit and dwell in them, are adopted into the sons of God by the gospel. Don't we recognize when we hear someone speak wrong, we recognize it right there. If you're a true King James Bible believing man, you hear, you hear somebody quote something on the radio or you read a scripture somewhere, and you just know, that ain't right. That's misquoted. There's something wrong with what he's saying. You know why? Because I know God. I know God through Jesus Christ. These men don't. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. And there's plenty of them around. People who have their own name. People, oh, you know, well, you think of healing. Well, what was that name you just thought of? Well, he's not God. It's for him. Who's the greatest evangelist of the land today? What was that name you just thought of? That, who's your favorite? You think of television ministry. Who was that? And I bet you most of those, 90% of them, they are in their own name. What about your favorite preacher you got? Did you just think of a name? Was it God? Was it Jesus? I throw not his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory, God seeketh his glory, God's glory, that sent him. The same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Jesus just said, there is no unrighteousness. I am completely righteous. I am sinless. Now, if he did not just say he was God, he just said he was God right there. Because no man is sinless. For all have sinned come to show the glory of God. Not Jesus. The wages of sin is death. Yeah, Jesus is going to die, but because of our sin, not his. Do you realize <clears throat> if Jesus came on this earth and did not die for our sins, we could go see him today? He'd be still living, right? If he was sinless? 
He'd be still over there preaching, teaching, angering everybody for 2,000 years. To be comical. But he says, I have no unrighteousness. Did not Moses give you the law? Yes, he did. And yet none of you keepeth the law. Ooh. That'd be like somebody coming up to me and saying, well, I'm a Christian. You've never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. I'm a good dad. You've never been a dad in a day of your life. This, you know, I can cook the greatest meals in this restaurant. Your food sucks. <laughs> That's what he's telling them. You've never kept the law. Why go ye about to kill me? What did they break in the law? They're going, they want to kill them. That's one of the biggies. That's one of the big ten. By the way, by wanting to kill Jesus, according to Jesus' mouth, you violated commandment number one. And if you want to be so strict about the Sabbath, following him around, keeping track of him, you violated the Sabbath. And then you, viol you violated the idols because you became an idol. And you violated coveting according to Pilate because you want Jesus' ministry. And we've already learned in Matthew that Jesus said you don't honor your mother and father because you take money, you put it aside, and you screw your parents so you get the money later. And we learn in Malachi, man, that they're, they're getting wives and, and they're adultery and they're, and they're divorcing them like crazy as the priest class. So there goes that one. And so Jesus has all right to the, through the Old Testament books that we do have, that Jesus does have, Malachi is in their hands. You broke the law. The Lord's table is, is contemptible. Really? You don't honor the Father. I got to do this again? Come on, God. Can I have a day off from lighting these stupid candles? Can I have a day off baking this bread and all? You don't love God. And we read throughout the Old Testament, there's idols all over the land. And the people who answered and said, Thou hast a devil. Ooh. Saying that Jesus is unclean. And go, who goes about to kill thee? We'll leave that verse right there for a moment. We'll come back to it. Now remember, they said, who go about the king? You're a devil. Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work. And ye all marveled. I have chapter 5. Moses therefore gave you circumcision. Well, it really was Abraham, but Moses brought it back. Not because it is of Moses, but of your fathers, Abraham. And ye on a Sabbath day circumcised a man. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I do think my disciples, they rub, they rub corn and ate on the Sabbath. You perform an operation on the Sabbath, if that's the eighth day. You know what he just did in their face? He took, he took their holiday, the Sabbath, and threw it in their face. And he's proclaimed murder. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath? Go back to chapter 5. They are, remember chapter 5, that, 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 that's where I want to run to, it says verse 18, therefore the Jews sought more to kill him because he not only broke in the Sabbath oh there's the first charge that's the charge of all charges but said unto said also that God was his father making himself equal with God we're back at that pool of Bethsaida the guy who carried his his bed That's the charge. That is what they should have brought before Pilate. And Jesus says, I haven't forgotten that.
You're so whippy, you won't even bring that charge before Pilate. So back to chapter 5. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. That guy did nothing wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. Because all I said was, I don't think he said anything. He just said, get up and walk. They got to break the scalpels or whatever, rock or whatever they used. Who did the work on the Sabbath? They did. Jesus just spoke. And God spoke on the Sabbath day. He said, I'm going to take a rest and I'm going to sanctify this day. He, did, he spoke just like he did the other days. Let there be light. Let there be moon. Let there be animals. Let there be rest. And it's not like that God, you know, got in his easy chair, kicked up his feet, and started reading a newspaper. Then said, then said some of them, <clears throat> then said some of them of Jerusalem, then said some of them of Jerusalem, This is so great. Is not this he whom they seek to kill? Verse 20. And the people answered and said, Thou hast a devil. Who goeth about to kill thee? Then said some of them at Jerusalem, Is not this he whom... <laughs> now there's a battle going on. We're not going to kill you. Hey, is that the guy you wanted to kill? Ooh. Don't you feel like having some humble pie right now? But lo, <clears throat> he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Oh, man. Don't you know that that's the Messiah? How be it we know this man whence he is. That's according to 9.29. They don't know where he's from. See, they don't even know what they're saying. They're lying upon their lies. They know where he came from. He know they know who their his father supposedly is. They know his mother. They know his family. It's in the books. This man and his family has been coming for thirty-two years. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 32 years times 3, a minimum. They know who he is. But when Christ cometh, no man knows whence he is. Oh, that's a lie right there. Because there he is. You don't believe it? Ask John. Don't believe it? Ask the work. Sounds familiar? Don't believe it? Ask God. Don't believe it? Ask the word. Go back and check Moses, because he wrote of me. He's fulfilling every day he is living. He is fulfilling the Old Testament scriptures, going to the empty tomb. All those scriptures about him are going to be fulfilled and are being fulfilled for him. And if you knew the word, if you knew Moses, you would say, this sounds familiar. But they don't, and they won't. How many times have you gone through the Bible and you're going through the Old Testament? Hey, that's something that happened to Jesus. And you mark it. How come we can find in the Bible something that happened to Jesus and these people can't who are studying in the letters of the law? Because they know not God. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, that's God speaking. And ye know whence I am. I am not come of myself. But he that sent me is true. Whom ye know not another stab in the, in the back with a knife. Now you know why they're angry. These men are supposed to know God. And he denies that they know God. They don't even know who he is. Nicodemus knew. Joseph of Arameas knew. The disciples will know. 
but I know him. I am from him, and he sent me. For God so loved the world that he gave his own. There you go. Now, did the Jews really believe what he said? Jehovah Witness. Then they sought to take him. Why would they take him if they didn't believe what he said? He just came out again. Seven chapters of John. I'm God. The Jews said, oof. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him. That's what? Believe him what? He's God. He's Christ. That's what he said. And it said, when Christ cometh. See? Same verse. Same talk. And ready? Will will he do more miracles than these which this man has done? Oh, many people believe on him, and he said, "Wait, many people believe and said, when Christ cometh, will he, the Christ, do more miracles than these which this man has?" Uh oh, there's a Christ in this man. Wait a minute, we got a problem. They want proof. He's already told them he's the Messiah. And some of them are not believing. Some do not want to believe that he is the Christ. That they should have more bar mitzvahs. You know, the 13-year-old boy. And you know what's so crazy today is that they will have a bar mitzvah for a 13-year-old girl. You mean to tell me you're waiting for a female Messiah? That's anti-scriptural. If any person has a thir has a bar mitzvah after 13 years old, you're too late. So some believe, some don't believe, some don't know, some are really hating him. How's that? That's the average you get today. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him. He's true. He's not. He's a teacher. He's not and just anything. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. It's almost like the garden. But it's not his time. You see what happened in the garden with Judas? Wasn't just something that's alright, here's something that, they're ready to send officers now to go get him. about a year before the garden about a year and they're already sending troops to go get him then said Jesus unto them yet a little while and I'm with you and then I go unto him that sent me all right for God so loved the world that he so where's he going with scripture with scripture he's going to God where did that happen Acts chapter 1 Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, there ye cannot come. Now does that sound physical or spiritual? That's, that's physical. You're going to seek me, you're going to come looking for me. You're not going to find me. And where I go, you can't come. I have never seen Jesus. I, right now living cannot go where Jesus is. I gotta die to be present with the Lord or the rapture. So that's physical. We're going back into physical physical again. But I have a spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ today. There are gonna be Jews are gonna later on they're gonna want to seek him. They're gonna want to kill him. They're gonna want to hug him. They're gonna love him and he's not going to be there. Once he ascends to the Father, he's not coming back in your toast or your tree. Then said the Jews amongst themselves, physical, physical, whither will he go? 
that we shall not go shall not find him will he go to disperse among the Gentiles? physical is he going to go to another land physical and teach the Gentile no he's going to heaven the spiritual what manner of saying is it that he say ye shall seek me and shall not find me and where I am then you cannot come to be with the father he's already told you you have not believed on the father you don't know nothing of the father you're not going in the presence of the father you're going to hell in the last day the great feast and there's a lot of conceptions about this and I'm going to just read the verse I'm going to read what the Holy Spirit wrote for us okay Jesus stood and cried sent cry will you tell your husband shut up he's too loud Jesus stood and cried for all to hear him if any man thirst where did that come from John chapter 4 let him come unto me and drink so they all come up with straws and start you know sticking Jesus with a straw like you do with those drink cups no he that believeth on me as the scriptures say has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water that's the speaking of the Holy Spirit yet to come And no one's coming up with straws that you know stick in his belly and start drinking the water. It's spiritual. The Holy Spirit. Can you see the Holy Spirit? Can you be physical with a spirit? No. Nope. But this he spake, he of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Oh, look what look at another revelation you get. If I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes shall not perish, not only am I not going to perish and get everlasting life, according to Jesus in the Gospel of John, I will get the Holy Spirit. Look at that. I have drank of the living waters that he's speaking about, and I never poke a straw into Jesus at all. I have not seen Jesus to poke a straw in him. Which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Well, check that out. People in the Old Testament did not get the Holy Spirit like we did. All right. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard these this saying, said of truth, this is the prophet. Deuteronomy 18, 15, 18. They believe that this Jesus is the one that Moses said. That prophet, the Messiah, likened to Moses. Okay. Others said, this is the Christ. That's great. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Well, yeah, there's a place in the scripture that says Naphtali. But he didn't come from Mount of Galilee. He came from Bethlehem, according to the scriptures. He just They just went and lived up in Nazareth. Well, he was born in Bethlehem. So they're battling it out. Has not the scripture say that Christ cometh of the seed of David? Was Matthew 1, which Luke 3 say? Remember that big taxation you had? Remember where jo where Joseph had to take his family to go? Where David was? Where was David living? Where was David born? Bethlehem. See the David out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? That's exactly where Jesus came from. Their own mouth has condemned them. If they go back and check the Roman tax rules, laws, I mean, uh, rules, so there were there was a division among the people because of him and the Bible always speaks about a division there's never unity of believers and unbelievers there's never unity of the world and Christians not supposed to be and some of them would have taken him but no man laid hands on him 
Then came the officers to the chief priests and the Pharisees. Now these are the same officers of 32 that the priests sent. Go arrest them. Go put, take them in custody. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees. Chief priests and Pharisees. Paul. And they said unto him, Why have you not brought him? The officer said, Never man spank like this man. Uh oh. The sheriff's department went to go get Jesus to serve a warrant and they come back. Wow. <laughs> then answered the Pharisees, Are you also deceived? Mocking them. The works of God, the works of the Spirit, the works of Jesus to the Pharisees are deceiving. You're not going to heaven. <laughs> not with that attitude. And watch this. Have any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed on him? Nicodemus, Joseph of Army. Or, uh, Joseph of Army. See, these guys are so undercover, they don't even know that there are people in the group of them that are believing. They may not even be there. I think it said about Joseph, he wasn't part of the council. Have any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people, ooh, you prejudice, who knoweth not the law are cursed. That's a great thing to say about your 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 fellow brethren. This people, the Jews, do not know the law are cursed. Well, if they don't know the law, it's because you haven't taught them. You just condemned yourself. Thank you very much. Yay. If they don't know, it's because you have not been teaching them. You've been teaching them other things other than the law. Like washing hands, washing the platters. And telling you that the, that the, that the nation of Israel is cursed. Oh, great chief priest. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, Nicodemus said unto them, Oh, Nicodemus is there. Run back to 3 2. That came to, the, okay, just to make sure you get it, that came to Jesus by night, being one of them. That's a side note. I bet you none of these chief priests ever read John about that one. Never wanted, you know, if somebody left, I'm, I'm, I'm being funny now, but if somebody left a little pamphlet of the Gospel of John in a barber shop or something, and they got to sit there and read it, and like, oh! Come here, Bobby. Look at this. It says right here that Nicodemus, one of us, believed on him. Put that away. It's garbage. Don't read that. It's that's New Testament. What are you doing reading it? Put it away. Here, take an Us magazine. I love the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, "There's one guy. You said, has any of us ever believed on him? Yeah, there's one right there, Nicodemus. I'll give you his name. How's that sound? Does our law judge any man before it hear him? You've been judging Jesus. Jesus has all right to say, Judge not, least ye be judged. Nicodemus says, Does our law judge any man before he hear him and know what he doeth? Deuteronomy 117, 19, 15. He says, Listen, you haven't put this guy to trial. And everything this guy is doing shows who he is, Nicodemus speaking. They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Ooh. Search the scriptures. This is the wrong kind of search. Search and look. Oh, this is not search the scriptures. Search and look, for out of Galilee rises no prophet. Jonah, 2 Kings 14.25 The disciples came out of Galilee. I got a note here, Nathan, Nahum, 727, verse 42, Matthew 2:22 and 2:1. Their own prophet that is in the book of their of their Old Testament, Jonah, was of Galilee. Second Kings 14:25. See, they're bad mouthing. The people, they're bad mouthing their land. And this is the land that God's given them. This is the people that God's given them. And they're all cursed. Nobody like us. We've got the letters. 
And all that confusion, every man went unto his own house. Nicodemus put them to silence. You know, can anybody come out of Galilee? Let's go home. Night over. Punch your time card. No overtime this week. <laughs>